Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live on day one of three days of Walter Wall coverage, winding down day one. This is theCUBE Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, George Gilbert, we keep on big data analyst at Silicon Angle Media. Next guest is Chuck Yarbaro, Senior Director, Solutions Market at Pentaho, a Hitachi Group company. Congratulations, the merger's complete. Yeah. You guys yeah, now I'm part of the big mothership. Almost a year ago, yeah. Talk about the changes, what's happening. Certainly the big data market hasn't slowed down. Donna was on last year, um, and she really impressed everybody with the mojo of Pentaho, obviously, and now the acquisition and the putting the combination together. What's, yeah. that, what's the update? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's all good. Um, Hitachi, a lot of people looked at it like, you know, that's an interesting move. Uh, the reality, it's all about the Internet of Things, right? Um, and the industrial internet. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you look at companies that do a lot in the industrial space, Hitachi is one of those. And, yeah. uh, and, and so they're doing some very interesting things. From a Pentaho perspective, yeah. uh, we're still Pentaho. And, and that was the agreement from day one, was that we weren't going to change who we were. We we're going to, you know. And you have freedom, too. They're not like, they're not shackling you guys at all. No, you guys we're are still completely Pentaho. Running, you were running hard before. That's right. And running That's right. hard now. And the investment is behind us. In fact, uh, we're continuing to grow our team, grow the numbers. Uh, literally, I came from a, a new hire training uh, here in Santa Clara, and uh, a huge number of new yeah. people. So it's uh, it's exciting time for Pentaho. Um, yeah, I, of, Chuck, I was really impressed with um, you guys. I, when, I, when we first interviewed them, we did your event. You guys were running hard, but the focus was on the value proposition, which now is obvious to everyone, right? Which was data's got to move fast, data's going to be built into applications, Applications. There are going to be unknown things that are going to come in, and data's got to be enabled to be successful. But you got to set it up. Yep. So you guys really made a nice business on that. So what's 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 now? What's the next chapter for Penta? I mean, I'm more simplifying. Maybe that's not the messaging, but yeah. for the most part, I mean. No. So so it's important to understand kind of where we came from, right? So we were open source BI, or at least that's the way we're positioned. The reality is. Early on, our founders looked at what analytics was all about, you know, from a business intelligence perspective. And it was always started with a business pro or a, a data problem, right? So from an early point, it was do data integration and do it right to prepare data for the analytic process. And that's exactly what we do today. Yeah. And, and in yeah. fact, Pentaho got kind of, um, yeah, you know, it, some of the analysts had a hard time figuring out where to put Pentaho. Yeah. Because, well, you do some data integration, you do some front end analytics, you know, where do you fit? Well, the reality is we always had a vision that it was that important horizontal. to manage yes. that entire data pipeline yeah. for an analytic purpose, purpose yes. to then do something with it. So if you don't prepare the data to be used right, then you know, you're know you not, well, not going to well, get what you need out. So let's tie that together. So now the rage today is you have to be horizontally scalable for the data, but yet you got to be pre-packaged or focused with some domain expertise in the analytics area. So that's what everyone's talking about. So that kind of brings to the next question is, if you really don't fit into the special magic quadrant because they're siloed quadrants, um, you're hit fitting this way, what's the solution look like? Because you guys now are enabling that pipeline yeah, for uh, analytics. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you. The, How do you sort that out? The, the interesting thing is what we do enable are very high scale, um, complex use cases that require that entire uh, orchestration and management of data throughout the what I call the analytic data pipeline to properly conform that data to you know do some of the ETL kinds of things we used to think about. In fact, we were talking about. Uh, data warehousing, you know, earlier, right? So, you know, we would go to an operational data store, grab some data, uh, you know, do some transformations and put it in a data warehouse and then we'd analyze it. The reality is the data is coming too fast, too varied. Uh, it's not just operational data anymore. It's coming from all over the place, devices. And, and now blending that on the fly as it's moving and delivering that in a governed approach, that's the key, right? That's what we can do. So, so being able to do that and, and deliver 
um, you know, that intelligence is the value. Uh, one of our big customers is uh, FINRA, uh, interesting, uh, you know, watchdog of the stock market who has huge data assets. So I gotta, I gotta ask you the question. So this is the thing back in in the day. So in big data land, George and I were basically you know, talking about this earlier. When you have the whole set of industry players who are running around the industry, trying to figure out, oh, open source is going to win the day. Open source, Hadoop is going to save the day. Um, that was the like good education for everyone with Hadoop. But Hadoop didn't go away. It morphed. Certainly, Spark has taken a front seat and everything. But it's not just about open source anymore, and there's a variety of choices. So you're seeing kind of a trend, I was calling it the BYOT, bring your own tool to work. Tool as in like tool to work on a product. Yeah. So there's a diversity of tools now available, and that's a good thing. Um, you guys have an announcement called Filling the Data Lake. I want you to take a minute to explain that because I think that speaks to why people jumped on Hadoop. Yeah. I got to grab the data, why am I going to throw it away? I got compliance issues, I better keep it, or they'll throw it away only because they don't want to say they have it, but they have they store it and they'll say, we'll figure it out later. So that yeah. then merged into why are we storing it? That became the data lake evolution. What are you guys doing specifically around filling the data lake? So, um, data lake is an interesting topic, and it's, it's on a lot of the messaging out here. A um, friend of mine and uh, former, well, founder of Pentaho, uh, James Dixon is the guy who kind of came up with that. He coined the term, right? So the data lake term has been around a while, but um, you know the problem, people think about data lake and, and they either take one side, they go, oh, that's good, or oh, that's bad. And the reason why they say it's bad, and I think it's because of the way we describe Hadoop. Hey, it's a great environment that you can just dump all your data in. And you know what, the easiest thing to do in Hadoop is dump your data in. But what happens is if you just dump it in, you're literally going to create a swamp because you're not thinking about managing that data. So our latest blueprint that we announced is filling the data lake. It's really taking that very simple topic of how do I get data in, but in a managed approach. How do I reduce the, the complexity that happens? So. Um, I've got a couple of customers in the financial services space, very large banks, yeah. that are dealing with not hundreds of data sources, they're dealing with thousands of data sources. And typically what would happen is, and, and George could take probably 15 different tools and take um, something as simple as a CSV file and push that into Hadoop. That's easy, right? You can do that lots of different ways. The problem is when uh, that becomes a, a thousand different sources, you have to typically create a process for each one of those, right? You have to know what the metadata is, you have to define that, and you have to build that transformation process or that load process. How do you do that when it's at scale, when you have a thousand, or in or one case, six thousand? Yeah, or fl and flow too. Yeah. So diverse connections, but also yeah, and, flow. And, it's, and these data files don't tend to be the same, right? They're, they're unique, they don't all have the metadata applied. So uh, we have some technology inside Pentaho Data Integration, which we refer to as metadata injection, but think of it as making your transformation processes highly dynamic. So enabling you to inject metadata at any step along the path. So if a, something as simple as a CSV file doesn't have a header record, well, you know, you got to figure out what that metadata is. And the normal way to do that is you build, whether it's in code or using, a, you know, an ETL type tool, you would configure it, you would build it and, and apply the metadata at the time you build it. Well, then you get 6,000 of those transformations, and that's the complexity, right? Yeah, yeah. The, what, what was simple, meaning loading data into the lake, that was simple, but when it becomes 6,000 of those, that's complex. Yeah, it's like because streams, something's gonna go all these down. different streams coming into the lake, or whatever metaphor you want to use, whether have it build its own process. In some cases, there'd be new data types that they don't have a process. Yeah. So you, do you guys have the ability to take any new flow coming in, new data type, yep. and on the fly do that? Yeah, and so what this blueprint does, reference architecture, and leveraging this concept of metadata injection and uh, making these transformation processes dynamic, you can literally have uh, as few as one transformation process. So somebody goes in, they think about how they build that that, that whole ingest process, 
uh, and um, be able to derive the metadata at the time of execution. So what's the impact for customers? What's that mean? What's in it for the customer? Bottom line is they can, you know, when you have a large, high-scale number of, uh, of files, you can build your ingest processes much, much quicker. Because literally, you could do it once and do it intelligently, and it can interrogate the data or use a template to uh, to inject the metadata at execution time, so that you're only doing it once and support thousands of uh, of of literal files coming in that are in different formats and So this is a big columns. pain point so takeaway. It's a the, huge, it's, you know, it becomes How about getting data painful. out? How about getting data out? So data in, manage in, so I get it. Yep. You guys so automate. So that's what our blueprint, that's what we announced is this concept of filling the data lake. We're helping you make, just And that was that. announced today. And that, and, and the point there is manage what you're doing, right? Don't just dump data in, right? That's the wrong idea, that's what creates the lake. So. And I, I like to use, a, I've got a picture of a beautiful lake, right? Because that's the way I think of a data lake. <laughs> yeah. If I'm going to put time in to put data somewhere. It's 4th of July, Lake Tahoe is beautiful this time exactly, of year. Exactly. Should be clean I water. I want that clean, <laughs> pristine uh, lake, you know, where All I right, so just to close some. To then get my governed yeah. analytics out. I wrote a blog post in 2007 called Dirty Data, and this is around the Twitter data, which I was playing with at the time. So I just want to quote some research that you, you guys put out on your press yeah. release yeah. Uh, from, from Ventata Research. Big data projects require organizations to spend 46% 40 of their time preparing the data, and 52% of the time checking the data quality and consistent. That's 90, 8% yeah. so, of their time. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming it's not the same, yeah, yeah, but yeah. maybe some overlap there, but still, great amount of time. Significant. So data cleanliness is a key part of this. Yep, yep, and that's, you know, again, part of our. Not just the ingestion, I mean, our putting it in. Well, or and, and what do you call it? You don't really call it injection, that's, injection. That's really Im important. So uh, in an ingest process, again, simple, Inject right? or ingest? So, <laughs> it's a little confusing. Oh, inject. There's, there's meta, so we have technology yeah. called metadata injection. It's about it's about dynamically putting the right metadata. metadata into a process. Okay. The pro the the process filling is, the data lake is, is about inge the ingest. The, the lake process. is ingesting the yeah. data. Got okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Okay. So uh, so so you know having that in a controlled way, you know helps you to to one not get that swamp, and two ensure that you're delivering on the governed data that. You know, you're promising your users, right? And so if you don't have the right data, and, and I think you'll also see some research from Forrester in there as well. You know, the sheer number of data sources that are being blended together. Does Wikibon have anything in is, here? Um, is, George, what's your take on this? You know, I quoted in here. What's your take on this? The data lake. Well, I was actually going to ask, which is, there's a spectrum from dump it all in, yep. separate, essentially silos of data, to um, take five years to, you know, design a schema for every last, you know, um, eventuality. And then there's, you know, some somewhere along that spectrum. And I'm guessing, you know, no, no one really wants to be on either end, but there are, domains of data that can be clustered together. Yeah. And you then know, you iterate, you know, and add structure over time to the whole thing. What, and yeah, what we're seeing, lattice. what we're seeing repeated amongst our customers, and really yeah. what drove us into creating a blueprint, the reference architecture, uh, implementation guides, services, offerings to support yeah. it, uh, was was really the, the idea of, um, typically, they want that raw data put into Hadoop, but, uh, and, and a lot of that is, again, simple stuff. Some of it's relational, some of it's coming from CSV, some of it's other, other sources, but in the example of CSV, that data, uh, you know, to copy it, they, they want to preserve that raw source. Okay, great. But the challenge, and I think where you are going with that, is how do I use that data? If I'm going to use Hadoop effectively, you know, I probably want to then take that data and format it in something different. A lot of our customers are saying, you know what, put it in the Avro format. You know, a, a, a format that really takes uh, takes use of, of right. the cluster right. and makes it easier to do the downstream analytics on. And so, this blueprint that we've released 
does exactly that. You know, you can you can bring the raw file or you can leave the raw file and just bring in the Avro format. But it's about uh, uh, enabling, uh, uh, you know, and simplifying the process to get that data in and convert it into something that's more usable. Avro. But even with the Avro, you know, format, it's nested data, so it's sort of like, you know, hierarchical joins, and I'm sounding really techy, but it, you're not doing anything like the intergalactic data warehouse data modeling problem that caused so many data warehouses to fail. No, no, the, the idea is to fill the lake, right? Okay. So, fill so the lake with, with, it's with almost like, n not guppies, but, you know, <laughs> trout. <laughs> I, I like I, I like fishing for trout a lot okay. more than Gu guppies. guppies are the bait. No, guppies <laughs> the data in metadata injection. Yeah. That gets the gu that gets the, the trout to the lake. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, so so yeah, it's uh, not it, down it's at about the molecule level. Yeah, we're we're talking about you know raw uh, fish, large at scale <laughs> uh, data movement and and managing it right, ensuring that it's a process that can be simple. Well, there's all kinds of lakes. I mean, the species, sure. if you will. Get Getting to the kind of the, the fish analogy is kind of funny, but uh, it's interesting because the species of the data, the whatever type of data, there's huge lakes, just trout and some little lakes, and then you got master lakes with currents and everything. So, mm -hmm. so the lake size is is not an issue, or is it? Well, it, no, I think it comes down to, well, it always comes down to what the use case is, right? What are you yeah. actually trying to get out of it? If you're doing this just to, are we, have a lake, are we talking about Lake Michigan here? <laughs> are we talking about? I mean, give me it's the order depends. of magnitude of like the size of uh, lakes you're talking about that you've experience with uh, filling the Well, lake. I mean, I can give you some, some well, ideas of some of our customers, yeah. uh, you know, FINRA, uh, an application that runs around seven petabytes in, in, in size. That's an, that's an extremely large yeah. data lake, yeah. uh, you know, but they're doing some, some unique things, looking at data, uh, you know, stock market data. Yes, um, so it kind of depends, but it's, it's it not depends. at the size of the lake that matters. It really, no, it, no, but you guys, managing but you guys don't. Ensuring that you don't turn it into a swamp is what matters. Yeah, right. but for your limitations, you don't have any limitations on the lake size. We don't. You we fill don't up whatever see, lake yeah, we don't volume yeah, the customer we don't, wants. Yeah, right. Okay, so yeah. okay, Chuck. Final question for you. Explain um, what you're working on with Pentaho, your group, Solutions Group specifically, um, and why should someone want to work with you guys? What do you guys work on? So the folks watching could get a, a feel for some of the things that they might, if they're not already a customer, uh, could be a customer. What okay. should they know about you guys? Well, great. Um, you know, it's um, it's a great time to be at Pentaho. Uh, my team focuses on solutions. We're talking about anything where the Pentaho platform can be leveraged. Uh, with other, you know, other things, um, services packages and things like the, the, the filling the data lake blueprint. Um, we're we're doing some interesting things. We're, we really look at what our customers are doing. Yeah. You know, what are where are they finding value? We've got a bunch of customers that. Do so you engage with them? It's just a process. You absolutely, guys have an, absolutely. Can you take us through like what you would know, that look like? like yeah, sit so, down? so you know, I tell you what. There's one that I've got my team working on around cyber uh, security. You know, analytics around what's going on. You know, on my servers. Um, it's very interesting, and you know, there's some connections with Hitachi there because Hitachi yeah, is an has, infrastructure yeah. provider. So, you know, there's some some uh, infrastructure analytics things that we're beginning to to see more and more customers ask for. That is pretty exciting. There's really interesting things, and it's some areas that traditionally, from a, maybe a data warehousing mm -hmm. perspective, we haven't always been involved in. And now we're getting, you know, we're, we're seeing the need and and recognizing, you know, how quickly we at Pentaho can can add value. If I'll give you the final word, what's the one thing that you'd want people to know about Pentaho that they may not know about? Well, I, you know, I think it's important to understand that we're about big data integration and simplifying your, uh, you know, everything you have to do to prepare data for analytics. And, and this is the important part, is that we can then help you do what you need to do with that data, whether that's uh, do predictive analytics, drive that through an R process, you know, so prepare data and do the analysis and deliver that, whether that comes back in a visualization. And scale's not an issue. And scale is what we do well. All right, Chuck, thanks for spending the time to share. Thanks, That's Appreciate a serious it. injection of content here on theCUBE, uh, metadata injection and ingestion for you. Thanks for watching theCUBE. We are bringing the live content to you here at Hadoop Summit 2016. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert. We'll be right back with more right after this short break, day one coverage. Oh,